Hello, I'm Sister Lisa, and I'm coming to you today from Hazelwood, USA, and that is what we call this little home service. Um, you know, the United Pentecostal Church, the headquarters was in Hazelwood, Missouri for many, many years. And years ago, I had a dream, a goal, an idea. I had something that I thought, I thought my husband and I, I thought we would start something called Hazelwood, USA, which would be a, a theme park a theme park for the United Pentecostal Church and other people to visit. But we thought at this place that people can come over and there'd be like a, a, a museum, uh, there'd be a con concerts, there'd be church 24-7. It'd be like general conference 365 days a year. It's always going to be enter any denomination and exit with the apostolic experience as Peter preached on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2.38. That was my goal way back then, and I even wrote, I even wrote to headquarters, I even wrote to the United Pentecostal Church, and they said it was not in any of their intentions to ever have a, a theme park for the United Pentecostal Church. I just thought it was a great idea. I still think it's a great idea. But you know, this Hazelwood USA, what we call it, it is online. It is virtual. On my YouTube channels and, and on my Facebook pages, I have groups. And it's just like if you went to a, a theme park, you'd have over here, you'd have the kids area. I got the Mark and Sandy puppets. And you, you have the ladies auxiliary. I have women who create rags to riches, different things like that. I have these different areas. And um, so it's not what I had in mind as a child, but who knew that I could be right here in Henderson, Tennessee and be talking to my friend Ida in um, Valley Golly, is that how you pronounce it? And North Ireland and other places uh, all around the world. We are the family of God. We are the children of God. We are his people. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the coming of age to age. The coming of age to age, El Shaddai, the Ancient of Days. Stand still, stand still. Acts 20, 20, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. That's what we're doing. From house to house. Acts 20, 21. Testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we are doing, teaching repentance. We must repent. The Lord said, if his people who are called by his name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then he would hear from heaven and will heal their lands, heal our, our lands. And so that's what we are doing. We are reaching out to edify and uplift and encourage one another. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, the power of God, the power of him. The world is weak. We're weak. But, you know, God is strong. Somebody's, somebody's coming in the door. But you know, God is great and greatly to be praised. He is mighty. He is mighty. So, um, that's what we've been talking about. Excuse me, whoever that is. I don't even know who that is. But um, we are talking about how today, you know how I always say that today is like a math day. Today is um, three, the month, three times seven, that's the date, equals the year, 20. One, right. I, now I'm so nervous because that happened. I don't know who that was. But anyway, um, I'm trying to stay focused here and find out who that was. Hopefully it won't be anything major. But when you have tough situations in life, decisions are hard. Sometimes indecision is the wrong decision. Or is it? We can act in haste and repent in leisure. We can act in haste and repent in leisure. That happens so many times in our life, doesn't it? We just, we just make rash decisions. And they say, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. You know, we hear about that a lot. You know, it says, be careful what you speak because you don't know what words you might have to eat. So we've got to be careful. Um, but God can even take those situations and circumstances and turn them around for his glory and for the good. Because um, I, I might have it in my notes, but talking about how Peter, the Apostle Peter, he acted in haste when he cut off that soldier's ear. But what did God do? Jesus just bent down and picked up that ear and put it back on. 
and restored it. It was made whole. So God takes our, our, our mistakes and turns them for the good. We're going through a very similar situation in our life. We, um, we have the situation that um, there's something that we've been expecting for a while. And it looked like, well, it might not happen. It might be a no instead of something. But it looks like, you know, we just stand still in our problems and our tests and trials. We all have them. We all go through tests and trials. And we've said it before, our tests become our testimonies. Our messes become our messages. God uses our examples if we have the right attitude, if we can see Him in everything because He's there. He is there. He's working all things together for our good. So if we focus on those and know that someday this too will pass, they become history. It becomes a part of the past. One day we can look back and see what we should have done, could have done, and would have done differently. Say, if you go back, what would you have done differently? What would you have done? People say, I'm, I would have done this, I would have done that. I might have done this, I might have done that. But you know, if the Lord orders our steps every day, if we pray and say, Lord, order our steps, help us make the right decisions, if we know that He is ordering and leading our, and guiding our lives, then no. If we went back, it would do the same thing all over again because He is the one that is ordering, directing our path. That's why we have to pray about everything. Pray about everything. Pray, seek God's face. He never said it would be easy, but that it would be worth with it. He knows the desires of our heart. He knows the desires of our heart. And I think sometimes the devil knows them too because he hears us speaking. Um, and then he tries to make it not happen. But God knows the desires of your heart and my heart. And we've got to remember the devil is not omniscient. omnipotent. He is not, um, he's, he doesn't have all power. He doesn't, he's not everywhere. The devil is not. God is. God is everywhere. And God is working everything to our good. You've got to remember when, um, when the devil was cast out of heaven, he took a third of the angels, but two-thirds stayed with God. We have more power. God has the most power. He has more power. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. God is bigger than all the demons in hell. God's greater than all the obstacles. He can move mountains. It says he can move mountains. Mountains of fear. Mountains of doubt. And cast them in the sea. Just remember that. God can, God does, and God will. We just have to let these tests and trials bring out the Jesus in us. Bring out the Jesus in us. And I think that's what it is. In fact, I was talking to my husband this week, if I can find it. I might not brought it over here. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, um, I have another story I can tell. I was um, looking for my birth certificate. I know I was eight years old, and I know I'm going to be 58 this year, so I know sometime after I turned eight that I'm going to be celebrating my 50th, 50th um, baptismal, uh, what do you call it, spiritual birth. And so um, I knew my mother had given me mine years ago. I didn't know what I did with it. Uh, we have this folder here in our file cabinet called um, Important Papers. So I went and looked in there and I didn't see it. I'm like, oh man, I've got stuff everywhere. Most people do. We have boxes of papers and things here and there. I'm like, oh man, I don't know where that's at. I text my mother, I said, would you happen to have written down our, my um, baptismal, um, the date I got baptized, would you have written that down to her? I'll have to look for it. So I'm like just thinking like, well, I'm gonna go up in the attic and look. I'm like, no, I'm gonna go look in the file cabinet one more time. And I went and looked in the file cabinet and I found it. See, God cares. He lets us find stuff. I believe he sent me back to the file cabinet instead of, man, once you start looking around places, you start messing up. But while I was looking for this, while I was looking for this, I also found this. <laughs> what are these? These are a whole bunch of newspaper articles that I wrote to the Western Front. The U.S. needs a return to sanity in um, 1991. I wrote, uh, we must rededicate to reversing abortion laws. I wrote that in, I think, 92. The nation needs to amend its ways and turn to God, June the 1st, 1992. That's just a few of them. But this is what I was doing before Facebook. This is what I was doing before online um, record. I've been doing this for years, putting out these little devotionals. But anyway, that's um, 
that was the kind of beside the point, but not yet, not really, it's not beside the point because when we um, trust, oh, that's the fruits of the Spirit, that's what I'm going to talk about. These things that we go through, it should be bringing out, if you're prayed up, it should be bringing out the love, the peace, the long suffering. See, the long suffering is something I think these trials that we go through is to see if we won't blow up and be mad. Don't become angry. Do not act out in the things that our flesh would like to act out in. Instead, turn it over to Jesus. Stand still. Let God move. Let the Lord do it. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. That song, Victory, Victory Shall Be Mine. Pray, pray some more. Pray even more because prayer changes things. Prayer changes us. It helps us to become patient and let go. God know that it's all in his control. We can't pray and ask God to do something and us try to take it upon ourselves and do it ourselves. No, because that's not standing still. That's not depending upon the Lord. We trust in him and lean not into our own understanding. He'll give us that peace that passes all understanding. So when you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams, remember that old song? When you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams, and your hopes have been cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested schemes. When you feel the urge within you to give in to earthly fears, don't let that faith you're standing in seem to disappear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's working all things for our good, and it's in His timing, His will, His way, His perfect plan. So watch, wait, listen to His voice and His heeding. Smile, rest assured. The answer is on its way. Have you considered people in the Bible that had tough situations thrown at, at them? The people in the Bible is like, man, they. when we think we're going through something, we didn't go through anything. Nothing like they went through. Their difficulties. Over and over again, Jacob, he had to fight at every turn. In the womb, out of the womb for his birthright, for his bride, he had to fight for everything. He had to wrestle with the angel of the Lord. And he lost his son Joseph, or he thought he lost his son Joseph. And now another son was being held captive until he returned with Benjamin. Remember when the whole story? Everything was a fight. Jacob had to go through all these things. But many other examples throughout history. But these people overcame these obstacles. Don't let your problem, whatever you're going through, whatever I'm going through. Don't let these problems consume you. They do, they get a hold of your mind, don't they? It's almost like all you can think about. It's almost you cannot function, but you have to. You have to turn it over to the Lord. You have to take your problems to the Lord and leave them there. I've got capital letters on my paper here. Leave. You've got to leave them there. That is so much easier said than done, but doing so proves that you trust God. You say you trust God. Now show God you do trust Him by leaving it in His control. When we try to work things out on our own, saying it, that is saying to God that you trust yourself more than you trust Him. You've got to let go and let God. Exodus 14 and 13. Moses, he said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. He told them to stand still, and he gave them that promise. First Samuel 14 and 9 says, If they say thus to us, tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and will not go up into them. Another instance of standing still. Yes, these verses are out of context, but it's just showing. It's not just us that have to stand still. These other people had to stand still. Psalms 46 and 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. He wants the glory and the praise for everything that we go through. He is making and molding us into His perfect will and His perfect time. When you take matters into your own hands, it makes things grow worse. Peter took a sword, I already said this, and he cut off Malchus's ear. Moses was 80 years old when God called him to lead 3 million people out of Egypt. And still Moses had not learned patience. So God had to give him 40 more years of, of lessons. Well, he had 40 years that he was in Egypt and 40 years in the wilderness. 
The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You feel you're walking all alone, but He is there, no doubt. When the storm around you rages and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions, not sure which way to go, stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, He'll make a way for you. Stand still, let God move. When the enemy surrounds you and the walls are closing in, when the tide is swiftly rising and you wonder where he's been. Friend, there never was a moment that his arm, arms weren't reaching out. You can rest assured and, and be secure. God is moving here, right now. Stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you've reached the end, he'll make a way for you. So stand still and let God move. I, a long time ago, I wrote a little thing that says, when you're at the end of the rope, you'll find hope. That's where it is. When you've done everything you can, you know, Jesus, he can do more. He can do more. That's what he does. The, the impossible. Uh, we listened to the, a light. We was listening to the, um, New Life Tabernacle. No, New Life Fellowship in Terre Haute. We was listening to them live today while we were um, making our, our meal, our general meal. And they were talking about how the fact that when you give stuff to God, how everything's multiplied, and he was giving all kinds of examples about how the woman only had a little bit of oil. What did God do? He multiplied it. The boy had just um, the five loaves and two fishes. What did God do? He multiplied it. So many instances in the Bible. So whatever you have, God can multiply it. He can make it, make enough, and even more than enough. Our God is more than enough. So I have a little. I have a little something I wrote today. It's called the process. Don't, be, don't mess with my calling, and in time you'll see. It was the hand of the Lord leading and guiding me. Trust in the Lord that he'll work it out fine, and the person I'm becoming will reveal itself in time. I prayed that God would use me, and he saw my willingness. I told him I was available, and then he began the test. I've been through the ringer, and I've been tried with the fire, but it's all part of the process. It's because of my desire. So don't try to figure out who and what I am, for I myself sometimes wonder, but it is on his word that I stand. So in time we will see a masterpiece revealed, for he's the potter, I'm the clay, and I am centered in his will. Well, God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful day. I'm sorry this was so long, and I'm going to have to find out who that was knocking at the door. <laughs> Maybe it was Jesus knocking at our heart's door today. Let's be still. Let's let him in. God bless you. Have a great day wonderful rest of the day. Oh, it's a math day. I think I already said that. Three times seven is 21. Bye-bye.